Hey, welcome back to the Ghost Out Love Podcast. I am Josh Beach. In addition to introducing you to amazing families with kids on rare medical journeys, we want our podcast to provide extra resources and insights into topics that might matter to you, as well as give you the chance to get to know our team a bit. So if you have an idea of a topic we should cover or maybe a guest we should have on the podcast, please send us a message on social media. All of our handles are at Go Shout Love or shoot us an email at team at goshout.love. Our guest on this episode is someone who has had an impact on all of us simply because without her, Go Shout Love would not exist. Kristen Estock is the founder of Go Shout Love, but most importantly, she's a genuinely awesome person, wife, mom, and teacher to her two kids. In our conversation, you'll get to hear the history of how the business was started, as well as the highs and lows of her involvement with Go Shout Love. Before we jump in, if you believe in the work we are doing at Go Shout Love, please head over to Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast platform and give us a rating and review. It definitely helps us reach more people. Thanks again for tuning in. I really enjoyed this chat with Kristen, and I hope you will too. Well, this is something that we have thought about doing, and it's been kind of in the works. We've wanted to have the opportunity to share uh, a little bit about our team members with everybody, as well as bring in some additional resources and kind of grow our podcast in that way. And so I thought, Kristen, to be would you would be the great way to start that off as far as um, – because no one is more Go Shout Love than you. Mm. Um, <laughs> you are the, the dream and the uh, – founder. So you are, you are the dream behind what is now go shout love. And so, um, which we, everybody who's listening to this and myself being a part of it, um, is impacted because you act, you chose to act on that dream, which I think is really cool. Um, and so I'd like, I'd really just like to start with you kind of sharing a little bit about who you are personally, and then, and maybe, you know, introduce your family. Um, and then we'll jump into go shout love stuff. Yeah. Well, thank you for saying all those nice things. Um, I'm Kristen. I live in Pittsburgh, and I'm married to Dane. I have a son, Eli, who just turned six, and a daughter, Jay Lee, who is three and crazy. And I, um, I think that comes with the mom. that comes with the three year old territory. I think. Yeah, yeah, she is something else. Um, I'm a homeschool mom, so I homeschool them, and. So I spend a lot of my time with them and trying to escape sometimes, go on <laughs> jogs, bake. So that's how I, that's my therapy at home. Yeah. Yeah. So take us back to, um, was it 2014? Is it 2014? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So take us back to before there was Go Shout Love and introduce us to what, what got us here. Yeah. I can't believe it was 2014. Um, so I was a new mom. Eli was, well, gosh, I can't, it seems so long ago. Maybe he was one. I think he was one. So still a new mom. And I had heard from a friend of a friend. So kind of a weird connection about someone who had had a baby who had just been diagnosed with a rare and terminal illness. And it was um, spinal muscular atrophy. And that was Grace and Nella, who we consider our first Go Shout Love family. And at the time when I heard that, it just struck me. And I was just so upset for them. I didn't, I wanted to do something. I didn't know what to do. And I think that's how most of us feel when we hear stuff like them. But I did not know Grace at all. So (laughs) I was, but I just felt really prompted to reach out to her. And at the time I had a really small blog, not a lot of followers or anything like that. And I asked her if I could write up her story because all Grace was asking for was for people to spread her story, to make awareness for SMA because I had never heard of it before. And most people Mm -hmm. around me had never heard of it. So I just asked if I could help be one of those people to spread the word about what was going on. And she said, yes. So I shared her story on my little blog and a lot, it started to get a decent amount of shares for how small it was. And it started to get some attention. And a lot of people were asking how they could help too. Um, people, 
and most people will be familiar with Grace and Nella, but there's something about Grace and Nella that just really draws you in. And so people fell in love with them the way I did immediately. It's kind of impossible not to. And so people were asking how they can help. And a lot of little shops were asking if they could donate and we could do some sort of auction. So we did an Instagram auction. Those were really in then. And um, within two days, we raised over $5,000 for them. Oh, my gosh. So, yeah, I had no idea what I was doing. And I had help. I had friends help. And um, Jessica, who the Go Shout Love team member. And um, so she got plugged in on the first the very first month. I think so. I, my memory is hazy on that, but I, I do think she did. It's like she jumped in right away wanting to help. I think she helped me tally or something. Uh, she'll probably remember that better than me. Yeah. But um, <laughs> <laughs> um, So after that, I had some people ask me if I could throw them an auction or write their story on my blog. And I started talking with people and we were like, we could make this into something. And we just hit the ground running and like set a family up for I think it was the following month or maybe a couple months later. And, and that was Silas and Allison. And we phased out of auctions cause it was just too much work. Um, and we wanted to do shirts that really spoke to the family story. And here we are. Yeah. <laughs> so you are, you have your first child and you, and Eli's one at the time. Yeah. And so it's an overwhelming work. We're, we're we have uh, our little guys almost seven months. We have a three year old as well, but it's, it's a crazy time. Yeah. Um, and it's not, you know, it's, you know, it's kind of like it, they say having, there's no perfect time to have a child. There's no perfect, yeah. you know, like you just choose to do things certain yeah. times in life. And, but starting a business or a, a cause driven business is not like, that may not be the perfect time. No, so what, <laughs> what do you, what do you like chalk it up? What do you chalk up to? Like, I can't walk away from this. What? Yeah. And that is such a good question. I have never felt the way I felt when I heard about Nella and Grace. I really haven't. I was, I just had to do something. Mm -hmm. And then when I learned that there were more families and that this could be like, we could create a space for people to come together, link arms and rally for these families. Mm -hmm. It's just not something I could easily walk away from. So it was, I just was really prompted to do that. I couldn't shake it. And it really wasn't in my personality. Now I'm much more bold and outspoken. But at that time, five years ago, I was really reserved and not someone to even reach out to someone I didn't know and be like, hey, can I write your story on a blog? Like that wasn't like me. So Mm -hmm. just, I mean. So what did, what did Dane have to say when you said, hey, (laughs) This went really well. I'm thinking about doing this all the time. Dane, thank God, has always been my biggest support. So like yeah. he's like, go for it. You do this and you need to, if you're going to do it, you need to do it a hundred percent. Like he yeah. was not reserved for a second. I'm the one, like if he gives me a big idea, like even like building a shed in the backyard or something, I'm like, no, we can't do that. <laughs> like he is the one who is always behind me a hundred percent. So yeah. If anything, he was dangerous for me because he's like, do it and let's do it good and get it done. <laughs> was he um, was he involved much? Uh, he was he would help with the numbers. because yeah. that is not my skill. So he would help with the numbers. He would help with shipping. Shipping was like I, I would be shipping till three in the morning. But mm-hmm. so he did. Yeah, you are familiar with that now. Yeah. I'm sure <laughs> he was not. I, that was more my thing. I would like turn on Netflix, get it going and just get it done. What part of that whole season? Um, and maybe I guess we could even say even now, I guess in all, all your involvement in go shout love and we'll cover kind of a transition period here in a second, but in all of that, what do you think has been the most, uh, rewarding and the most challenging, um, personally for you? in your involvement with Go Show Love? Um, The most rewarding just happened. I was just talking to someone about this. um, When we went to California for the uh, April families, April, Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And um, when we went to Micah's house and all of his friends were there wearing all of our Go Shout Love shirts and they acted like we were celebrities when we walked in. That was insane. Like I, I, 
because you just go, go, go with this, as I'm sure you know, and you don't really step back and be like, this is impacting other people beyond just, not just, but beyond the families we feature. Like there are people who are really rooting for this, who I've never met, who don't know me from Adam and this is something to them. So that was really special. So, um, for most challenging for me, which we'll get into with the transition, but just like balancing all of this as a mom with my family and all the other things and wanting go shout love to be number one priority, but that's not realistic or good for my family. So trying to balance all that and figuring out where I fit in that was probably the most challenging for me. So what time, I'm um, trying to think back when, when was that? So yeah, our, I got to know you. Um, I kind of got connected with go shout love because you reached out. I have another side business that does digital marketing and websites and you reached out and said, Hey, we need a new website. And I don't, I think you were a few months in, I think you did have some, you had a website up and running. Um, but I don't, I don't know how much um, planning for the growth had been put into it at that time. I think you were probably just like, hey, this is working and we got to do something. And so you got something up. Yeah. Um, Yeah. And so I don't even remember like how – because we are not – outside of Go Shout Love, we have no like circles in common. um, No, we've only like met in person like once. Once or twice. Yeah. Maybe just once. Yeah. Um, (laughs) And so – uh, I don't even remember like how you got my name, but anyway, that's, that's kind of our connection. Yeah. Um, and so, um, I remember starting, starting up and being really excited, like, cause I, I remember that my, my, my business, uh, I do, I do a lot of work for some small businesses, but a lot of it is, I really enjoy working with nonprofits and cause driven, cause driven businesses because there's there's people at the heart of what you're doing. It's not just trying to move widgets off a shelf. There's like, when you're trying to think of things from a marketing standpoint, it's so that people can better benefit. And that's what really like struck me as, um, and really excited was exciting to me about getting to work with you and go shout love. And, um, and so I remember we started with the website and then, um, then we were able to grow and do some of the videos and, and Seth and I got to, do that. And that was like, it was a dream come true for us because it was storytelling again with people at the core. Um, and so I don't remember when, what that timeline was when, when you had kind of decided to to slow things down, but could you talk through that a little bit about when that was and what led to that decision? Yeah. So I think it was either the very end of 2015 or early 2016. So it was before I had my second child. Um, my daughter, I was pregnant and I have really rough pregnancies. So I was really sick. And then for just like about a split second, nothing came of it. Everything turned out fine, but the doctors were concerned with some things with the baby. And I, it was just insanely stressful. And then on the business end, there were some things that came up that really needed restructured and it just needed time. It needed a lot of focus and a lot of attention. And I was on the verge of like (laughs) breakdown because I was so concerned about my pregnancy and my health and then, um, the business. And so that was really hard because like I said, Dane is like, he was like, no, you just got to keep going. You got to keep going. But I was like, I can't. And then I was, I remember, um, through a, I was at a doctor's appointment and my heart rate was insane. And like, they, we're going to send me to the ER. And it was just like, after that, I was like, I, something has to give, like, I have to, I need more time to give the business justice to, for it to grow and be the best it can be. And for the families of go shout love. And then my family, like I need to be (laughs) mentally sane. So I decided to put it on pause and I really didn't know what was going to happen with it. And it was really hard. Like I was, when I had to tell the girls who were working with me at the time, I was sobbing and this was I'm so proud of go I love go show love it's like my third baby but we had to put the brakes on it um so that's kind of what prompted that and I was kind of like I have no idea what's going to happen I just need to have this baby and I think it was February when I was for sure like we're going to break and then I had my daughter in April and then you know newbornness yeah. <laughs> so like trying to and she was fine everything was fine and it was a everybody was fine and healthy, but, 
I needed some time to figure out and for the business to be restructured a bit. Yeah. And so what, what year was that? Did you say? 2016. Okay. So 2016. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then for a year and I, I was sobbing on the other end after you (laughs) talked to your girls. I hated telling everyone. Uh, (laughs) I was, and like, what's, what's really uh, crazy is that at that same time I was making the decision. So I had, my business had always been a side business up until then. And I had just decided to, to go into that full time. And like, uh, the, the go shout love work had not played into that. Like I wasn't like, I made this huge life changing decision based on go shout love and Christian pulled the rug out. It wasn't like that, but it was so cool that the timing, uh, as far as like when we started and expanded, it was like, to me, I was on the other end of a dream and it was like, I had this passion yeah. of doing work that matters instead of, instead of, I was at, at that time I was working at a digital agency, um, and we were selling, I worked with awesome people, but at the end of the day I was selling box mashed potatoes yeah. for a national brand, which sounds good on a resume, but when not you go to put is. your head, yeah, when you go to put your head on the pillow, it's not like, man, I really <laughs> got something <laughs> done today. For this yeah. Stuff. And so it was just really cool. The timing for me was like this. I had made that decision and then that new opportunity came to expand my, our, how we were serving Go Shout Love. And it was just this, I fell in love with the organization at a deeper level, but it was also this really cool, um, affirmation, I guess, of my dream of like, okay, you can do this and here's cool work that's going to keep going, you know, that's, uh, that you can be proud of. And so, um, we were bummed. Seth and I both, yeah. not from a, I mean, of course, when you lose a job or a client, that's a bummer, but it was, it was a bummer because we, we really were invested in the mission. Yeah. Like we believed in what, what you guys were doing. And so I remember at that time sending an email that I, and I'm probably pretty bad at this, like overstepping unintentionally. I'd probably do that a lot. But one time I, I sent an email that I, I read through it a couple times and I'm like, I don't know if I should send this, but, and then I just decided to send it like, uh, something like if you ever need partners or you want, yeah. if you ever want to sell or like, I, I would be interested. And it wasn't yeah. like, I am so far from like, I'm not a venture capitalist, like that's ready just to like buy up businesses or anything like that. Yeah. But I thought, man, I believe in what this I believe there's still opportunity here. And so I think I probably sent, I'm exaggerating when I say I sent seven of those emails to you over, over, over a year and a half period, but there probably was a few. I don't Um, remember it being overdone. No. Yeah. But yeah, I remember the emails and I remember like I was really, I mean, I was just in the throes of, I've never had a child that sleeps well. So I was just like in the throes of, and I remember it took me a long time to like get back and I kind of passed it off to Dane. I was like, what do you think? How about you chat with Josh? Like <laughs> this I was guy keeps gonna, bothering me. Into, oh, yeah. into <laughs> <the email. laughs> no, but I was just like, I just was so unsure what to do, but I knew that especially as I continued to grow and being a mom and I started to get a passion for homeschooling that I was like, Maybe I was just meant to start it off and it's just to grow. And now I pass it on and, and absolutely like, just like I had no doubt that it would be in capable hands with you because when you were doing the website and the videos and stuff, you always had so many great ideas and you were probably the, you were such a supporter, like you're saying of the mission behind it. So we were really excited and I felt really good about giving it off to you. Hey, a quick break from my chat with Kristen to invite you to shout love with us each month for kids on rare medical journeys. We offer a monthly subscription where you can automatically receive a t-shirt each month inspired by that month's child and a portion of those proceeds every month go directly to the family of that month to help cover the cost of tangible needs that come with providing the level of care that those kids deserve. So if you're interested, you can start a subscription now on our website at goshout.love. And you can save $5 off of your first month by using the discount code podcast at checkout. Again, that discount code is podcast for $5 off your first month over on our website at goshout.love. You said that Go Shout Love was your third baby. Did you have reservations? Like, did you think for any time, like, maybe 
maybe not. Like maybe they should just do their own thing. And it's okay. like, you can be honest. No, I really didn't. Cause it was either, it was either I give this off or, or it dies because I, I knew in my heart, I couldn't, keep, I could not do it. Like I would go through all the different scenarios. Okay. Well, we're going to start again and we'll hire some, but it just, I love it so much and I'm so passionate for it, but I am not meant to run it. <laughs> and I just knew that like, and, and I, it needed to be passed off to someone I trusted and someone who I knew actually believed in the business and someone who I knew who could do it. And I really think it was you and Rochelle. So I did well, not like once it was decided, I felt so good about it, but I thought I was just going to walk away. <laughs> yeah. That's, that was my next I, I was question. Done. <laughs> so that was, um, and Rochelle and I are incredibly grateful that you trusted us with that. And, um, and so what kind of a, from a timeline standpoint, I think we're in 20, 2019 now. So that was, I think we started having some of those conversations in maybe February or March or yeah. even maybe even April of, of 18. Um, and at that time, some of those conversations were, um, you know, we were like, okay, maybe we could launch it January 1st of 19. Like we thought it was going to take a lot of time to get planning. And then we, we kind of broke through on some logistics on how we could structure things and function. We, we actually ended up launching officially on July 1, which it's crazy to me, to me that we're almost a year, you know, like yeah. almost right at a year of, of launching, uh, being back up and running. But I, in those conversations with, I think I was even talking with Dane at that time, um, you know, that was one of the questions that we had was like, you know, does Kristen at that point we were kind of we were even thinking about exploring the nonprofit realm and having a board. And we were going to even, inv- you know, invite you to be on that board if you yeah, wanted to. Yeah. And it was so interesting as we would come up with questions and then you would also offer other, you know, oh, I remember this is something that we did for shipping or, you know, it was almost as if we could sense without any phone conversations through email, a sense a spark of yeah of excitement or like maybe a, a, a passion coming back. And so I remember Rochelle and I just, cause we knew that one of the reasons that we didn't think we'd be able to get up and running is cause we thought, okay, we're, no, we're going to have to hire some help in certain areas and we're going to, it's going to, you can't just be anybody like you were saying, it's got to be the right people. And you know, Rochelle and I had a conversation and it didn't take us long. And it was like, well, maybe we just need to Ask Kristen, like, hey, I know you said you wanted to walk away, but are you sure you want to walk away? Yeah. Um, and if you could only do what you enjoyed, yeah. would you be interested? And uh, we were really excited when you said yes. And so um, so now you are our community relations director, which um, has shifted in some ways over the year as we're still trying to figure some things out. And re- after, you know, it's it's hard to relaunch a brand after it's been silent yeah. for 18 <laughs> months or whatever it was but it's been also been in, it's really been cool to see so how so many people have reacted with positivity and I think that's a testament to to the dream that you acted on were you hesit- hesitant yeah. about stepping into that again yeah like, yeah because I was just I just was, had never been in it without having everything on my shoulders so I was like yeah. I don't but it's been awesome. It's been, I get a little piece of it and, and then I'm able to be the mom I want to be to my family and, um, and the wife I need to be. And sometimes, and (laughs) so it's just, it's, it's been great. Like this is where I'm supposed to be at. I, I have no doubt that, like I said, I have no regrets about passing it off. I was, I, like, even you said, maybe I, I'm meant to dream up the dream and I'm glad to let you do all the work <laughs> and <laughs> well, I'll do my little bits. <laughs> I will say that you mentioned three o'clock. Uh, I, my, I'm running off of, uh, we, I went to bed at one last night, getting a bunch of orders out completely separate from families and their, their stories. What has been your favorite t-shirt design to date? Oh, that's such a hard question. Um, Sea Love, I mean, that's like, Sea Love is definitely one of my favorites because I, which is really interesting. I actually, I don't think I even really ever owned a graphic t-shirt before. <laughs> I don't really care for them, but now I do. <laughs> but I think like, that's something that you and I have in common. If I'm yeah. not wearing a Go Shout Love t-shirt, I am wearing a 
plain color. Yep, me too. Or striped, maybe. But yeah, I'm not so, but I love ours. And I actually really love this month's um, shirt a lot. So, which yeah. ha- I'm going to forget the phrase. And I love yeah, it. happy makes the world go round. Yes. And, yeah, yeah. and I have gotten so many, comp- I've been wearing that one a lot and I've gotten so many compliments on it. Awesome. So I'm a gray t shirt person. So whenever we're all talking t-shirt design, I'm like, Oh, I'll vote for gray. What, what is something that you would say that you've learned, uh, or that you, in an area that you've grown, um, because of your role in go shout love and, uh, or maybe instead of, or in addition to your engagement with these families that have such unique and, um, their stories are so impactful. What, how has that changed you? Oh, <laughs> um, so much. There's <laughs> like these families have changed so much of my outlook. You know, you, you hear about these families and these situations all the time on social media and all these quote unquote sad stories. And you like people just typically want to comment like thoughts and prayers and whatever. And, um, but getting to know these families on a deeper level. And I feel like go shout love allows everyone to get to know these families on a deeper level. But, um, it's just shown me how narrow minded we can be on children with special needs or children who are on a rare medical journey. They're not they're not children or families to be pitied. They're not. Um, I think a lot of people want to say they're suffering and they're, and that's probably something I would have thought they can't, they're probably unhappy. They're suffering. They're sad all the time before go shout love. And these are some of the happiest, strongest families I've ever encountered. They're not suffering. They're, They're, they're joyful. They're loving. It's just really, knocked my perspective. So it, yeah. and I try really hard to advocate that to anyone who acts like that. Cause you see mm-hmm. a lot of, and it's just, people aren't educated. I, I feel like, but you see a lot of insensitive comments and people saying a lot of insensitive things and it's just not true because people aren't taking the time to get to know them. And yeah, I really hope go shout love is helping people get to know that side of it before we go um you one of the things that you're kind of um leading the charge on now is um we're starting to kind of open up the door to some sponsorship opportunities and so we're still working all that out as far as the best way to um uh to promote that and get that the word out there in the different ways that people can sponsor um but i guess uh if you were talking to a um someone who owned a business and they could make a, a a donation one time or ongoing, what, what would case would you make for go shout love to say, Hey, this is why this is worthy of, of your investment to help us keep helping these kids. I would just send them a photo album of all the kids. Yeah. (laughs) I think it's worth it, but yeah, just take a chance to listen to these family stories and to check out these kids and how amazing they are. There's, I can just, if you're able to sponsor in that way, they're worth it. I really can't think of a reason why not if it's something you're able to do. Um, They're going to change your life. They'll probably change your business's life. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. I hope you enjoyed hearing from Kristen and learning a bit about the history of Go Shout Love. So far, Go Shout Love has told the story of 41 unique children and given away over $200,000. And none of it happens if Kristen doesn't step out and act on that desire to make a difference for Nella. We are incredibly grateful for her and the work she has done to start and grow this movement. And as a side note, if you have a burning passion inside of you that you have not yet acted on, consider this your encouragement to make that leap and who knows what your stepping out in courage will do to help other people. If you're interested in helping us shout love each month, again, head over to our website at go shout love to start your monthly t-shirt subscription. Remember to use the discount code podcast at checkout to get $5 off your first month. We're also working on some unique sponsorship opportunities to help us cover some of the operating costs of go shout love. And our goal behind that is to get to the point where we're giving an even higher percentage of sales and maybe ultimately hundred percent of sales. That would be our ultimate goal. 
We're still figuring out exactly what that looks like, but if that sounds like something you might be interested in, please reach out to Kristen through email at kristen at goshout.love or shoot us a message on social media. Thanks again for listening, and uh, we'll talk to you soon.